mean, anybody know what a little church feels like? To, what freedom feels like when you're in a little church? So if you don't mind, can I just go back to that church and sing something my father would sing when I would? He said like this, he said, See, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Say, praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Anybody free in here? Come on, say, I am free. Yes, sir. Sister Nichelle Smith, and I'm the team lead for the ANC Dance Ministry. I got some good news. This month on April 30th at 6.30, we're having open call auditions. So if you're gifted in the area of dance ministry, liturgical dance, praise dance, we would love to see you at the open call auditions. But this is not only for dance. This open call is for my ministry. So if that's your area, we'd love to see you there. Now, open call is for ages 21 and up. If you're younger than 21, we still want you a part of the team. So you can join that also. For more information, email nsmith at ancfairfield.com. So for more information, email nsmith at ancfairfield.com. Now this is the thing. You got to know your right foot from your left foot and you can't have two left feet. See you there. 2024 Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International Conference in the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana. July 9th through the 11th. Join presiding Bishop Joseph W. and Dr. Stephanie Walker III and founder and co-founder Bishop Paul S. and Deborah B. Morton along with Bishop Jonathan Woods Sr., Elder Jasmine M. Robinson, Bishop William Murphy III, Dr. Linda Willis, Bishop Bobby L. McCarter Sr., Pastor John Hanna, consecration service with founder Bishop Paul S. Morton, and our worship encounter with international presiding Bishop Joseph W. Walker III at the New Orleans Convention Center. Visit fullgospelconference.org today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Come on, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me that it was time to go to church. Come on, anybody happy to be in here on today? Y'all ain't making enough noise for me. Come on, anybody glad to come and worship God just one more time? I got one more time to tell them thank you. I got one more time to give them glory. I got one more time to give him honor. I got one more time to reverence his name. He's been good to me. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put breath in my body, clothes on my back, food on my table, gas in my tank, money in my pocket. Anybody got a praise in here this morning? Hallelujah. We came to magnify him. We didn't come here to just sit here, but we came to have church this morning. Anybody come to have church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I want to welcome you out to our 9 a.m. experience. Come on, we came to have church on this morning. If Listen, do we have any first-time visitors in the house with us on this morning? Any first-time visitors? Look, we all family? Look, praise the Lord. Then we all family. Come on, clap your hands. Listen, if we have any first-time visitors with us online, if you could text FTV to the number that appears on your screen. Come on, FTV to the number that appears on your screen. We would love to get connected with you. But look, at this time, we're going to go ahead and jump into our vision statement. If you could jump up on your feet with me, we're going to go into the vision statement. 
Y'all ready? Let's go. Listen, the vision of All Nations Church is to be a loving ministry that focuses on loving God's people where they are, existing to develop individuals that strive to be people of integrity by following biblical principles expressed in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a family-focused ministry that builds and cultivates families through biblical teaching and practical application, socially and economically improving lives evangelizing the lost and developing quality disciples through the preaching and teaching of the truth, welcoming all individuals to come as you are and leave changed. We are the church that lifts people by lifting Jesus. Now, come on now, y'all know what time it is. Y'all already know what time it is. Find you somebody, hug on them, love on them, tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Y'all just standing around, I need some pictures jumping. Come on, pull them phones out, take them selfies. When you take them, tag ANC Fairfield. Come on, we came to lift people by lifting Jesus. Come on, he said, if you do the lifting, I'll do the drawing. We came to get in the flow this morning. We didn't come just to sit here, but we came to magnify God. Uh oh, look at Elder Freeman. I see you, I see you. Uh oh, look at the jack. Come on, Jen, you better take the selfie right. I better see it right. But when you post it, it better be right. <laughs> look at y'all. I see y'all. Look, what y'all doing over here on this side? Y'all ain't moving over here on this side. Look, Elder, Elder Battler came in sharp on us this morning. She got her fascinator on. She looked like a sanctified mother in Zion. You better get the picture, Jen. That's the one I want to see. Hallelujah. Come on, pray. the praise team already got their picture in. I ain't going to mess with them this morning. And we're going to go ahead and get started. If y'all will go ahead and get your minds together for intercessory prayer. Let's go, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God the praise. Come on, let's give him the glory. We owe him the glory. We owe him the praise. He's worthy of all our praise. Let's engage ourselves. If you want to stand up, you can stand up. If you want to walk, you can walk. But we owe.
celebrate the king. Let's celebrate the wonderful counselor. Come on, make some noise in the house. Listen, our, our offertory scripture is going to come from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Um, I found it interesting. He, the writer pens and says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Interesting concept is that on the way here, as I was thinking about the text, Elder Freeman, the Lord zoomed in on the word sparingly. And the question was asked, well, what would give you the title of sowing sparingly? He gives me two things. He said, one thing that will put you in a room of sowing sparingly is inconsistency. That suggests it's that meaning that even though you get paid every week, you, you pay tithes every now and then. That will get you a sparingly return. Second thing he says that will get you a sparingly return, sparingly return is a lack of integrity. That suggests that you're supposed to give 10% of what you make to God and you're giving 6%. You're giving 8%, you know, you're floating around the number and that shows a lack of integrity, which will get you a sparingly reward. So I said, well, what, what would give you a bountifully reward? He says, well, what gives you a bountiful reward is you're consistent that in spite of what you're going on in your life, you understand that I am God and I shall supply all of your needs. The second thing he says that'll get you in a, ba a bountifully seed is that you have integrity that no matter what you sow every week, every paycheck, every seed you get, you make sure God has his first. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're in the room of bountifully reaping. Amen. So I'm going to ask you now to go ahead and get your seeds. The ushers in the aisle, if you're in person and you need an envelope, all you have to do is wave your hand. The ushers will give you one. We want to make sure that we put seed in the ground. Also, you know, it's our bishop's vision that we pay this building off this year. Somebody say this year. So if you go on our app or our website, there you, there's a drop uh, down box that says mortgage payoff and you're able to sow into that because we believe God with our bishop that this year, this ministry will be debt free. Amen. So we want to make sure that there's seed in the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, last thing is this. We're walking into the one of the greatest quarters in our life that I decree and believe that doors will find us this quarter. Amen, somebody? That opportunities, that money is going to find us this quarter. So you want to make sure that you have seed in the ground. We got many ways that you can sow. Text ANC, give to the 88 number on the screen. You can cash up, dollar sign, ANC, Fairfield, AL. Please put your full name in the uh, four box if you want credit for it, amen. And we're going to proceed again. If you don't have the ANC app, you're missing out on some great things. Download the app. Of course, you can sow through the app as well, amen. So listen, while you're doing that, can we take a moment and thank God for the greatest leaders in the world, our senior pastor, Bishop Jonathan L. Wood, senior. Come on, virtual church. Come on in person. Show your love for our lead pastor. Um, you know it had to be God for him not to be here this morning. And so it was definitely a God thing. And I'm sure he's watching service. So we're praying for you, Bishop. Preach all of it. Make sure you holler one time for us. Amen. We also want to thank God for the jewel, the diamond we have as a co-pastor. Lady Nicole Woods is here. We thank God for her. And listen, we got a treat for you guys, virtual church in person for 9 a.m. We have one of my favorite preachers coming to the platform. I'm honored. I love this man. I love his entire family. I always tell him I've never had a big brother, but if I had one, it would definitely be him. We thank God, and we're ready to receive the voice of Elder Johnny Woods. Can y'all make some noise for him? 
So listen, we're, we're ready. Hold your seat up very high. We're going to pray and we're out of your way. Kind Father, we thank you. We thank you for blessing the seed 100 fold. We thank you for all that you're about to do in the service. Cover us, God. Bless the man of God. Give him the word. Give him the strength, God. And we thank you for a return on these seeds this week, God. We love you and we adore you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and thank God. Listen, hold the seeds up. These gentlemen will be coming to serve you at this time. you received since you believed we are having our reach service this monday at 7 p.m where our bishop will be spearheading and we will be seeking for the holy ghost join us for our groceries on us on saturday at 10 a.m volunteers are needed join bishop as he goes to the no compromise movement on april 19th at 7 p.m in montgomery alabama family Let's support Bishop as he and other members of our church will be at the Green Tide Mental Health Concert on April 20th at 4 p.m. Let's pray. Join us for the Uplift Prayer Call with Bishop Tuesdays at 6 a.m. Also join us for our Noonday Prayer Tuesdays at noon via Google Meet and Thursday Prayer Call at 6 a.m. For dialing information, visit our social media platforms. To stay connected with All Nations Church, Follow us on our social media platforms for service streams, event info, and more. Also, download the ANC Fairfield app to receive notifications and announcements. All right now, family. These have been your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And now, let's get lifted. How many of you are ready for the word of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Can we stretch our hands to God and just begin to make worship? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God for who he is this morning. If he's wonderful to you, if he's been your savior, if he's been your redeemer, can we take a moment and just begin to stretch out our hands towards heaven? Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouths now and just begin to worship him. Come on, worship us. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. One thing I desire, only this I see. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Yes, Lord. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Oh, dearest Father, closest friend. Most beautiful, most beautiful. Let's sing it out. One thing I desire, only this I see. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture. Say, laying at your feet. Laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell.
let's say in church together just to be close to you is my desire just to be close Just to be close to you. I'll never be the same again. Just to be close to you. church out of the way we came in here because we want to meet God early in the morning anybody came to meet him early in the morning 
So if you really came for a breakthrough, if you really came for a blessing, you ought to give him some praise. Glory. Hallelujah. a full fountain desirous that you are pour into me your unworthy servant once again and now God let the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer and Satan we will not let you control this atmosphere we cast you out in the name of Jesus. You are defeated and God is exalted. And God, we will praise you on today. We will glorify you for everything that will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise. And how many are glad to be at the 9 a.m. worship experience? It's so good to see everybody, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably haven't seen me before because I am not a morning person, so I'm pretty much come to the 11 o'clock service. <laughs> so get a good look, and y'all can go ahead on and tell me how much me and Bishop look alike, and, but I am his big brother. Let's say amen for the greatest pastor in the whole entire world. Bishop Jonathan Lee Airwood Sr. Come on, let's give him honor. And I am so thrilled and honored what God is doing in his life and what the future holds for him. And beside every great man, there is a great woman. And I'm so glad that I have been a part of this journey. It blows my mind to see what my sister has become over the years. So let's say amen for our co-pastor, Lady Nicole Woods. What can I say about this man? He is the sharpest man in the church right now. Our own executive pastor, Kenneth Madden. He's just a part of the Woods family. We've taken him in, and my father has just adopted him as one of our brothers. And we thank God for all of the elders, and we thank God for the Jacksons who are here. Even in their time of loss, we just thank God that people have the wherewithal to pull themselves together and still come praise God. And before I go any further, I would be remiss if I do not talk about my blessing. And I'm not putting on no front. You know, some preachers get up here and talk, and I know for a fact they're just putting on a show. But everybody know me, no, I don't put on no show. What you see is what you get. Uh, I say how I feel, and it's, it's even tough to be my friend because um, the only reason why I ain't got some of y'all is because Bishop, Bishop keeps me off of you because I'm going to say it. But I've been growing over the years, Sister Jen. I've been growing. God working on me. He's taking out that stony heart and putting in a heart like flesh. Thank God. But I love my wife for life, Sister Ebony Woods. is an amazing human being. Her attitude is contagious. I'm the only one get the, um, the feisty side of her. But she is loving and caring and compassionate. And my son, he was my armor bearer this morning. So let's say amen for John John. I started serving my father when I was about seven or eight years old. And um, I got fired one time. I left his briefcase outside in Harpersville. I, I opened a trunk but didn't put it in there. <laughs> so he told me don't touch it. <laughs> but for about a couple months I just I just looked at it and then one day I just took it out of his hand and he released it. So I served him for years and it was an honor. Uh, we have some announcements that we must keep in mind. Monday night will be our reach service 
at 7 p.m. All of us that want more of God, and that should be everybody in this room, please come out and let's pray and call on the name of the Lord and get filled and full of the Holy Ghost. Also, our second quarter fast. How many of you were blessed by the fast? Come on, how many of you were really blessed by the fast? Because I'm going to tell you something. Like I told my family last night, I said, if you did not do the spiritual side of the fast, then you was just on a diet. You had to do the prayer. You had to read the scriptures. And you had to refrain from all the things that you were supposed to refrain from. So if you failed in those areas, maybe you need to extend yours another 14 days. All right. Also, Bishop, let us know, everybody that was on the call this morning, let us know the fast will be lifted after the 11 a.m. service or after search on today. <laughs> so I think I'm going to stop by Krispy Kreme on my way back to Oldenville and get me a dozen chocolate glaze and nobody touch it. I'm going to eat all 12 of them. And remember, I uplift prayer call with our bishop. How many of you are blessed by the prayer call? Our pastor has an anointing. He has a burden for prayer. And I don't know, I told him, I don't know how you be that energized and pray that hard at 6 in the morning. Because I will admit, some of them times I faded on him. <laughs> but when he was saying this morning, how many of y'all stayed awake? I said, Bishop, I can't lie. Sometimes I was, I was in there. But by the time he started praying, my, my faith got a little weak. All right, please get registered for the full gospel conference. How many of y'all excited about the conference? Our own bishop will be the opening speaker for the conference. Come on, saints. For those that are interested in traveling, there will be a bus traveling to New Orleans to the full gospel conference. There are 30 seats left. We should feel that easy. 12 hotel rooms. And for more information, please see Sister Shava Curry. I don't see her this morning, but... Please look for her. She's been around for a while. Who? Hogan. Hogan. That's right. I knew her when she was a little bitty girl, so I called her by her maiden name. But it's Hogan. All right. It's preaching time. How many of you are praying for the preacher? Now, I may, like, I may look like Bishop, but I don't want you to be confused at all. I am not no Bishop Jonathan Woods. So I need y'all praying. Are y'all going to pray for me this morning? All right, please. Um, if you don't mind standing all over the room. Bishop has started a series and as, as an elder under his um, pastoral ship. I'm just going to stay plugged right into the series. And he started a new series, Praying Our Way Into Favor. So this morning... Let's go back to the book of Matthew, which he began in last week, chapter 6, but we're going to start at the fifth verse. And the Bible reads, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. May God add a blessing to the hearing of his word. This morning, for a few moments, I want to tag this text, A Private Practice for Public Success. A Private Practice for Public Success. This morning, by way of introduction, I must have a transparent moment with you all, and hopefully y'all don't tune me out. You know, this is the age of cancellation, so I don't want to offend nobody, but I am a big movie fan. I love to watch movies. It really don't matter the genre to me. I will watch 
anything that will hold my attention. Do I have any movie watchers out there? Folks that ain't, ain't, ain't too safe and too sedity to throw a movie on every now and then. I love to see movies. I love to see how an actor can perform and, and draw you in and hold your attention. But in my observation and in, in my study of movies, one thing that always is intriguing to me, and that is, is what is going on behind the scenes. What's going on behind the scenes? There's lights, there's cameras, there's sometimes there's cores that are attached, there are special effects specialists, there's all kinds of things going on behind the scenes. And can I suggest this morning that our lives is like a movie that what you see right now is a finished product. What you see right now is not what you see because there's a whole lot of things in our lives that are going on behind the scenes. Can you be honest this morning and say, I got some things going on behind the scenes. I'll look at your neighbor and say, I got some things going on. There are some things that are going on behind the scenes. And in a movie, there's all kinds of things going on. There's cameras flashing. There's people on the board. There's a director sitting there. And there's all kinds of things going on behind the scenes. Some of the things that we have going on behind the scenes could be we're battling and fighting our own depressions. We're, we're battling and fighting our own anxieties. We're battling family issues. We're battling marital problems. We're battling stress and problems on our jobs. We have some things going on behind the scenes. There are some things going on behind the scenes. There are some of us that have children that are acting crazy. There are some of us that our relatives are acting crazy. There are some of us that don't know how we're going to make ends meet. What you see in here right now look good because we're dressed up. If the movie looks good, we're looking at you, you and you look like you have it all together. But behind the scenes, you are about to explode. Anybody in here got some things going on behind the scenes? You got some issues going on behind the scenes. You got some stress and trials and tribulations going on behind the scenes. I don't know about you, but I'll be transparent. Last week I had some things going on behind the scenes because I've had some prayers. I've had some, some things that I've been presenting before God and it hasn't matriculated yet. And I said, Lord, are you hearing me? I, I, I'm reaching out to you. I'm calling on you. God, what's going on? Is it something I've done? Is it something I've said? Is it something I neglected? Is it something I forgot? Lord, I got something going on behind the scenes. And it's a shame that this should be the place where we could be vulnerable. This should be the place that if I sat beside my neighbor, and I, that's another thing, you know, since COVID, we don't really talk to each other. Sometimes just ask him, how was your week? Sometimes just reach over and ask him and just say, I'm praying for you. Sometimes just reach over and say something. We can sit by people for two hours and never even look at them. That's a problem because if I come to church, it's not just for the word. It's not just for the singing. I come for the cornea. I come for the fellowship. I come for the brotherhood because it ought to be somebody out there other than bishop, other than co-pastor, other than EP that can speak a word over my life. You ought to be able to minister to one another. You ought to be able to pray over one another. You ought to be able to get somebody out of trouble. I got to work. I got to work because I noticed at 9 a.m. service and some of y'all sleep, so I got to work. And I drunk me an energy drink so I could have me a little more energy. So I got to work this morning because I need to get somebody out of this thing because you got some things going on behind the scenes.
But one thing that I love about movies, some of our greatest stars, they have the uncanny ability that with everything going on, with the cameras all in their face, with all the stage hands, with everything flashing and rolling, they can pull out what I call extreme focus. And no matter what's going on behind the scenes, they can channel the proper emotions. They can pull the correct dialogue. They can block everything out that's going on and perform at their maximum best. You know how Denzel can do it. It don't matter what's going on. That man, can he can command that screen. You don't know what's all going on in the background. All you know is that Denzel is killing it on that screen. And one of my favorite movies, and I'm hastening on, is the movie Thor. Now, I watch Thor for other reasons. I don't know why some of you ladies might watch it. But they got a man by the name of Chris Hemsworth. I, I mean, yeah, if you've ever seen it, Chris has spent a lot of time in the gym. But Chris says in an interview, oh, I hear you over there. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, that boy got it going on. But outside of the gym time that he spent, he does an interview. And he talks about one of the scenes in the movie. Now, Chris probably got the role because Thor is supposed to be muscular because he's the god of thunder. But his father's name is Odin played by Anthony Hopkins. And Chris says that he's never seen nobody with so much focus that with everything that was going on, he could pull himself to a place where he could block everything out. And he said his acting was so powerful that it was so quiet on the set that it had everybody mesmerized. Such is the discourse our Texas Taylor to teach us this morning, and I'll be out of here, and maybe we can stop and somebody can get some jacks or whatever they need to get on the way home. Our text this morning is from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 is in the middle of chapter 5 and 7. Matthew chapters 5 through 7 is what's historically known as Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. So I would challenge you all to go and read Matthews chapter 5 through 7. Although it's lengthy, it is full of spiritual attributes and Christendom. It gives us all kinds of, of behavioral attributes that a saint should possess. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, now it's not talking about poor in spirit as it, mean, as it relates to financial. It's talking about blessed are the humble. That I am so humble that I'm willing to give up myself, pour out my own selfish agenda, pour out my own ambition, pour out my own agenda, and let God fill me with his will. What would church be like if more of us became poor in spirit? You ought to say, Lord, fill me up. Lord, I got to empty myself out so God can fill me up. In other words, I got to get Jay out of the way. You got to get yourself out of the way. You got to become poor in spirit. If we became poor in spirit, it would be hard for us to get our services back under control. It would be hard for us to galvanize and pull ourselves back together because the spirit of the Lord will run through here so mightily we could not contain ourselves. What would happen if we was poor in spirit? What would happen if we were poor out of ourselves, get outside of ourselves, and let Jesus take center stage? I want Jesus to be glorified. 
Yeah, I didn't come here with an agenda today. I want Jesus to be glorified. I didn't come here worried about a seat today. I want Jesus to be glorified. I did not come with no selfish ambition because I want Jesus to be glorified. So the Beatitudes is exactly what it says. Attitudes is giving you godly instructions for heavenly responsibility. So it's historically known as his Sermon on the Mount, which is Jesus' fullest and longest continued discourse in all of the Gospels. It's saturated with a plethora of examples instructing us and giving us the consequences if we don't follow the instructions. So as a believer, we all need to read the Beatitudes. They are very pertinent in our lives as a believer. So the poor in spirit, the emptying of ourselves lead us to our text on today. And it says, when thou prayest, when thou prayest, don't be like the hypocrites. So firstly, Jesus is letting us know don't be like the hypocrites because they love to stand in the synagogues and in the corners. Now historically, the children of Israel did not stand to pray. They either kneel or sat down. So you already know they are out of order and we see it all the time in the church where people are just simply out of order. They just simply out of order and, 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 it, and it works my nerves because as soon as you say something to them, to them they are always the quickest ones offended. You was all the way out of order. You was all the way doing something that you shouldn't do. But as soon as I try to correct you and get you, get you some real governing and training in the house of the Lord, you are offended. So they standing and praying. So firstly, Jesus is trying to instruct us that prayer is not about showmanship. We're not here to be seen. It's not about showmanship. As a matter of fact, Jesus is telling us and he's trying to debunk the practice of the hypocrites, the place of the hypocrites, the posture of the hypocrites, and the payoff of the hypocrites. Now see, the practice is, is that they have their own agenda. In other words, I came so you can see me. And we see them, a lot of times people come in, strut in, and, and they, they wanna come all the way down to the, sashay all the way down to the front. They want the outfit to be seen. No, we don't have it here, I hope. But they want the outfit to be seen and they, they get an attitude when they don't get a preferred seat. They, they always want to do something on the program. They always got an agenda. That is the practice of the hypocrite. They want showmanship. And I suggest, saints, that that's one of the biggest problems in our churches today. Because some of y'all ain't going to hear nothing I got to say or whoever got to preach at the 11 o'clock service because y'all are ready for showmanship. We have created so many celebrities and personalities in the church that you only can receive from certain people. And you'll hear him say, oh, if Bishop Frank preaching, I ain't coming. And then when you come, you don't even listen to him. I watch the lives. Some of the same ones that won't come because Bishop ain't preaching be going crazy when he bring in an out-of-town guest that's telling everybody they're going to be millionaires and you're going to get a house and you're going to drive a new car. You, can't, you can barely contain it. You can barely calm them down. They're so loud you can barely hear the preacher. But you go back and watch the lives. They nine or they, or they texting on their phone where this man done spent hours in prayer. To get a word for you. And that's the reason why some of us stop because we're looking for showmanship. We're looking for entertainment. We come here so somebody can, so I can feel something. I later for the day when you talk about some, I didn't feel anything when she sang. I didn't feel anything when they preached. You weren't trying to feel nothing. And can I suggest? 
That showmanship has run our spirit of discernment. We've missed it because somebody that got a good voice and can tell us, oh, you coming out, turn around three times and tomorrow is going to be the best day you ever had and they live in all kinds of ways. And see, in the old church, they used discernment to talk about what I just said. You know, they, they, they were sitting, spending there the whole time while you trying to preach and you done studied and you sweating and you done cried and they want to know what they can feel. I didn't feel anything when he preached. I didn't feel anything when they sang. I didn't feel no nothing. You want to know why? Because you wasn't even, even listening to what they had to say. We done got so full on the word that we won't even listen. I don't know about you, but I, every Sunday I come in here, I empty my cup out. Because I need a word from the Lord. Don't entertain me. I got too much going on. Take the showmanship out the door. I want to see Jesus. I need my life to change. Is there anybody here that's tired of seeing the shows? Take the stars off the stage. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Somebody say scatter, 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 scatter. Scatter in my home, scatter in my job, scatter, 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 let God arise. I don't need no showmanship. I want to be able to pray where it move God. The practice of the hypocrite, the pastor, I've already told you, they were standing up when they should have been sitting down. Can't you see it? How proud some of us are. How entitled some of us are. Lord, help me. I don't want to be proud. Now, I want to be confident and a little cocky, but I don't want to be proud. Because when it comes time for worship, I want to be broken in his presence. Lord, do all I need. I can't breathe without you. When it's time to praise, my swag go out the door. When it's time to praise, I don't care who's looking at me. When it's time to praise, I don't care what you have to say. I'm going to magnify the name of the Lord. So the posture, they stand, the practice, the pride, and the payoff. So when you're insecure, because that's insincere, not insecure, because some of us, insecure Jasmine Sullivan told us that. Why you gotta be so insecure? Why you gotta be so insecure? When you're insincere, when you have your own agenda, when you're just praying because you got a good voice and the intercessors requested that you pray. And then the other thing, they like to pray in the synagogue. Now, the synagogue was for corporate prayer for everybody. But why everybody praying when these hypocrites would stand up and start, yeah, oh, Lord, just to be seen. And the problem and the reason why Jesus had to address it because people was getting excited about, about them and they was impressed by them and Jesus had to let them know, hey, those are hypocrites. And their pay and their reward is to getting all of you all excited. That's their pay. That's the reward. When they get the, the, the praises of man... When they get the esteem of man, that is their pay. But Jesus said, don't be like the hypocrites, but when thou prayest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Enter into thy closet. So the first thing Jesus teaches us is to have a disdain and shine showmanship. The second thing that he teaches us in our sermonic presentation is we got to have strategic focus. 
And the reason why some of our prayers are not going how they should, the reason why we feel like they're not being answered is because we don't have a strategy. We don't have a plan. In other words, we've never established a prayer time. We've never set a prayer time. We've never set a place to pray. We don't have a strategy. So what Jesus is telling us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, come up with a plan. When you pray, go into your closet, step number one. After you've got in, close the door. Step number two, that's a plan. You want to know why? He wants you to have strategic focus because he wants you to do how, how the movie stars can do. He wants you to be able to block everything out. Whatever's going on, when you get ready to go in the closet, you got to be able to block it out. So if that means I got to leave my cell phone out in the, in the bathroom or leave the cell phone in the bedroom, I got to have that a long time with Jesus. I believe as the Cardi Cartel said, I need, I need my one-on-one. -on -one. I need my one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. Is anybody here need some one-on-one -on -one time with him? So we got to block out the showmanship. We need a strategic, a strategic focus. Lastly, if we can come up with a strategy, if we can come up with a plan, and how many of you know Jesus is already there? That's what the text is saying. He said, the Father, which is in secret, meaning he's already there waiting for you in your place of prayer. The Father that is in secret will reward you openly. So if we can block the showmanship, if we can come up with a plan with strategic focus, we can build a successful relationship. Now, I've heard this scripture misquoted many times, and I've often misquoted it myself. Even when I was trying to look, up, look it up one time, I put in God, which seeth in secret, shall reward you openly. But the text does not say God. The text says Father. The text says Father because that's what God wants to be to us. The text says Father because he's not just trying to be our God. He wants to be our Father. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he wants a relationship with you. And every good father can look at his child and tell when something is wrong. So that's why the text says, the father that seeth. It did not say anything about him hearing. It did not say anything about what you said. He can look at you and tell when something is going on. As a father, my son don't have to tell me if something is wrong with him. I can look at him and tell. And that's how I feel this morning about a private practice to public success. Once we block out the showmanship, once we get a strategic plan of focus, we can end up with a successful relationship. I'm done here and I'm closing here, but I lived in Michigan Detroit for 16 years. I had a lot of friends that were Arabic. And quite often, we would talk about their prayers. Now, you'll never find nobody more diligent, more religious, more focused than Muhammad Neil. Yeah, I had a bunch of them, and, and, and about 10 of them name was Muhammad. But one day, Elder Freeman, 
I asked Muhammad, after one of his prayers, I said, Mo, can I ask you a question? What happens if there's an emergency? What happens if you was to get sick right now? What happens if your mother was ill? What happens if a problem arose? Muhammad looked at me and said, I don't know. Because all of their prayers are already written out for them. In other words, all five times a day that they would pray, their prayer was already selected for them. But I looked at Mo and I said, Mo, well, well, when I get in trouble, I don't have to wait for a prayer time. Lord, when I don't feel my best, Lord, I can go to the rock that's higher than I. And is there anybody in this room this morning glad that you don't have to wait for a specific time? Oh Lord, yes, I'm glad, yeah. Lord, we'll get there in a minute, Mark Davy. Lord, I'm glad I have a savior I can call on what do you mean Woods? his name is wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace what is it to you this morning Whatever you need, God's got it. He's got everything that you need. If you need joy, God's got it. If you need peace, God's got it. Whatever you need, it's in the hands of the Lord. I just stop by here to tell you, don't stop praying don't stop believing whatever going on God is able say yeah. yeah I don't know about you but I got some things going on I got reasons to go in the closet Get down on my knees and pray. I got kids driving cars. I got children in school. That's a reason. That's a reason to pray. I don't know about you, but I got reasons to go in the closet. I don't know about you, but I got things. I need God to do is there anybody here need the Lord you ought to lift your hands say Lord I need you Lord come in my room make a way out of no way turn things around won't he do it yeah! Yeah! Do you have any problems in your life? I know a God who's a problem solver. He'll turn it around 
Whatever, whatever it is, I came to tell you, don't give up, be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will take care of you, hang on in there, he's on the way, don't stop praying, don't stop believing, God will you're turning around I don't know about you but I can't lose heart I can't lose my faith I gotta stand on the promises of the Lord and one of these days God will he'll bring me out say yeah 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 yes he will you ought to give him praise, Woods. Why am I praising him, Woods? Why can't I give up? I got ten reasons why you ought to praise the Lord. Number one, he's been good. Number two, he's good. Number three, he's good. Number four. Why do I praise him? He's been good. Number five, six, seven, eight, nine. Show been good. Show been good. Number ten, over, over, and over again. He's been good. He's been good. Say yeah. I'm about to lose it, because I got a question for you. Has he ever made a way? Has he ever solved your problem? Has he ever healed your body? Well, you ought to give him praise. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. I'm out of here. Stick your arms around somebody. Whisper in the ear. Say, I know he's all right. I wish I had some Baptist folk in here to say, I, I know he's all right. Say, yeah. Yeah. God will, God will, I done got happy here now, I gotta get out of here, but I'm thinking about my situation, and all I can say is that God will, God will, God will take care of you take care of you won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it say God bless you y'all better come get me I feel good because y'all don't know I needed this too and if there's anybody here this morning your faith has been tried I dare you to run down to the altar with both hands raised as a sign of surrender that God will make a way out of no way. You've been overwhelmed. You've been praying. 
you've done your very best. But it just don't seem like it's good enough. I want to speak to the ones that felt like quitting. I want to speak to the ones that felt like throwing in the towel. Come down. Let the hands and the anointing of God resurrect your life. You're a good, good father. Who you are. Who you are. And I'm being loved by you. Who I am. Who I am. For you are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect.
your hands in the sanctuary. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. 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 As I was sitting there during this experience, songwriter penned some words and it, the word says, I will not be silent. I will always worship him. Hallelujah. Listen, really quick, we got, we got three calls we want to do. Maybe you're here and you say, I need to know who the source is. I need to know the Jesus that Elder Woods is talking about. I need to know the man that Bishop Woods has been praying about. I need to know who that is. I'm ready now to walk into a relationship with the man that we call Jesus. If that's you, do me a favor. Just lift your hands real quick. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Second call, maybe you say, I know the man, but I made some decisions. I, I, I've done some things that I'm not proud of, and I just kind of walked away from them. But I'm ready to come back into covenant. I'm ready to come back into relationship with him. If that's you, do me a favor. Lift your hands up real high. Hallelujah. We got one. We got one. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Well, listen. If you, if you're one of the ones that raise your hands, I'm gonna ask that really quick. You come down. I'm gonna ask our team to usher you into the chapel where we, our prayer warriors, to be there to pray with you. Elder Bowie, I'm gonna ask that you take that young man into the chapel and, and pray with him. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Last but not least, listen, maybe you're here and you're ready to make ANC your family. You're ready to make ANC your new church home. And on the count of three, I want you to get up and come down, get your stuff and come down because we are ready to make you a part of one of the greatest churches in the world. One, two, three. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Won't you come? Won't you come? Make the decision. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, one more again, one more time. Let's thank God for our speaker, Elder Johnny Woods. Come on. Standing all over the room, we're going to get ready to transition. I looked up here in the band, and I seen our very own Dr. Robert Jones was here this Sunday. Chris, I'm going to tell you what I did. I had to find out who this guy was that he was playing for. We believe in holiness around here. I told Alexa, put the music on. Start listening to it. All of a sudden, my feet start patting. I said, you are feet patting lie. That's not holiness. <laughs> and then, Chris, I start walking around the house, and I'll be doggone. I start humming a song. I said, get out of here. I said, Alexa, put on Prayer Room by Jarrell Smalls and Company. <laughs> No, man, but we're so excited, really did. We thank God for you and everything he's doing for you. You deserve it, and we can't wait to see more from you, man. Thank we just excited that you're back with us. Listen, let's remember, reach tomorrow, 7 p.m., right here in the, in the fellowship hall. Meet our bishop here. He'll be here. It's an amazing experience. Let's be here at 9 a.m. According to our bishop, you know, you'll be lifted after we dismiss from the fast. Now, I feel like if we won family that you should wait for everybody after 11 o'clock service. I'm just saying. Bishop talked about unity this morning at 6 a.m. prayer. And if we're going to be one family, you got to wait on us after 11 a.m. We don't want to see no fried chicken, no cakes. We don't want to see none of that until after 11 a.m. Now, we're going to be one family. Let's be one family around here. Go ahead and cancel your reservations and all that. Just wait on us. Repeat after me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're dismissed.